So, all right, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Edward Zhang. I'm the head here of this course. Um, some of you may have known me through Milestone One lab sessions. Uh, I'm a PhD student in ECE, and one of my research topic is about consensus algorithms and fault tolerance. And so today, uh, I'll be giving a lecture about consensus and fault tolerance in general and the case study of Raft. Okay, first thing first, uh, you have learned Paxos and consistency models in week four and week uh, six, probably. Uh, so let's recall what is the consensus problem. Um, so consensus, the word consensus, doesn't have a very fancy meaning. It just means a general agreement. And consensus algorithm, their job is to coordinate several actions to reach an agreement among all participants. So here, I've got three servers. And each server has an input value. For example, server one has an input value v1, and server two has v2, and server three has v3. So the consensus algorithm's job is to produce a total order log for each server. And the total order log um, presents like a key value pair. So the key is the order of those values or commands. And they are also sometimes called sequence number. And the value is a general concept. The value could be an entry, could be a transaction, and it could be just a simple command. So why do we need consensus algorithms in our applications, and when do we need them? So let's first look at a chatting application. This is something you, uh, you may have seen like every day. Um, so here we have two folks. And the boy texts the, uh, the girl saying, hey, where do you want to go tomorrow? And then immediately texts another message saying Brampton. And, uh, and then the girl replied, Markham. So this on the boy's phone, the record is like this. So we have, a, we have the, the order of the events is um, the question and uh, the location, uh, Brampton and Markham. But it is possible in our chatting applications that the girl sees the event as a different order, which is the question, and then the girl maybe replied uh, immediately and then received uh, uh, the, the second message from the boy. So um, this case is very common, especially if you are in a very large group chatting. right? So uh, in this case, there is no total order in this application, which means uh, we don't have a consensus of uh, the events, the order of the events. Um, but it's OK. Like Every chatting application uh, work like this. Uh, it may cause some confusion, but uh, we can always text the follow-up question to clarify uh, the meaning. Um, but let's look at another application, which is a financial application. So let's say um, the two folks are Bob and Alice. And the order of events on the Bob side is Bob deposits $10. So initially, Bob has $0. And then Bob withdraws $10 from its account. And then Bob transfers $10 to Alice. So in this case, the second event will succeed, but the third event will fail. And here the events are transactions, are financial transactions. So Alice cannot get the money because there's no money in Bob's account. Um, but if we change the order of the events, First, Bob deposits $10, the same. And then Bob transfers $10 to Alice. And then Bob withdraws $10. So in this case, Alice gets the money. The, the third transaction, Bob withdraws $10, fails. So the total order of event is the key of correctness in this application, especially financial applications. Just imagine like you are uh, programming a financial application. If there is no total order, if Every time a client uh, retrieves an event of transaction that's a different result, that will be a total disaster. 
So um, in some applications, we need the total order. We need strong consistency. We need consensus. But in some applications, uh, like chatting applications, uh, there's no need to uh, involve consensus. It's OK if we lose the consistency restrictions. And um, another thing in our systems, in especially distributed systems, is failures. So computer crashes every day, um, especially when you're using Windows. Um, okay, and you can see those blue screens nearly everywhere, at a, a railway station, at an airport, and even on vending machines. Um, but failures have different impacts on different systems. So if the vending machine goes down for two hours, the company gonna lose like 20 bucks. Uh, it's not a, really a big deal. But uh, what if this is a banking system or a trading platform? Uh, if the system goes down for two hours, um, that's gonna be a catastrophe and uh, your company's name will probably will be on the news. So to design a safety critical system, so we need a system that can tolerate failures, which means a system that can function correctly, even if some servers fail. And then let's look, at, uh, let's look into the, the failures, the family of failures, what type of failures we are talking about. Uh, first, if we have a blue screen, then we call this type of failure is, a, is crash failures. So here we have two servers. We have server one and server two. So uh, the workflow is very simple. Server one wants to send a key value pair to server two. And if server two crashes, uh, server two cannot get the value from server one. And there's another type of failure called omission failures. A common scenario for omission failures is the link failure. Um, there's some problem in the link, and then uh, maybe the message is dropped by the network. So in this case, server two cannot receive the value from server one. And besides the two uh, mentioned two failures, there are third type of failures called timing failures. For timing failures, a server may have a program, may have a timer to limit the transmission time of this uh, process. For example, we have the timer, we have the timeout in TCP IP. So if uh, after a sufficient long period, if the server can, still cannot receive the message, and then the server will drop uh, this session. And then if the, if the key value pair does arrive in the future, it will still be uh, considered as failed uh, message. Well, there is a common thing in the, these failures. It's when we send a read request to servers, if the server is correct, then we can just get the value, right? And if the server is incorrect, is faulty, uh, experiencing some failures, then we just cannot get the expected result. When we send a, uh, a read request, read K, and then we just return now, we cannot receive uh, the, the value. So it's either we get it or we don't get it. There's no extra drama in this case. And we categorize this type of failures, all these failure, type of failures, as benign failures. So the, the formal definition is, in response to a failure, servers can change to a state that permits other servers to detect that failure. So simply, in this case, when server two fails, and then the failure is detectable, we can use a timer as a failure detector to limit the message transmission time between server one and server two. And then if the timer times out, then we can implement additional approaches to handle this scenario, to maybe implement uh, other uh, programs to investigate if the failure exists or not. But there is another type of failure um, that has more drama than benign failures, and it can mess up everything in our system. So the behavior of this failure is unpredictable and arbitrary. And this type of failure is uh, often called as Byzantine failures or arbitrary failures. So let's say if server two has this type of failure, then server two does not follow our code, our program anymore. And when we send a read K request to the system, uh, maybe the first time we send read K, it returns value U. And the second time we send read K, 
it returns value, value W. So in this case, server two is a liar, and it's a liar in disguise. So Byzantine servers, um, Byzantine failures can be caused in numerous ways. And um, a common scenario is because your server is hacked. And in this case, your server will not follow the, the protocol, follow the program, and uh, sometimes it's also, called, uh, it's also called internal attacks or intrusion attacks. Um, the formal definition of business failure is servers can exhibit arbitrary and malicious behaviors. Um, so it, it changed to a state arbitrarily. It, it changed to an arbitrary state, and other servers cannot detect this uh, uh, state. And al also, faulty servers can collude to perform the failure. So, but luckily today, we're not going to focus on uh, visiting failures. We're going to talk about benign failures. Um, and tolerating failures is really not a new concept in distributed systems. It's also a concept you have seen in operating systems. Usually, it uses the, uh, redundancy to tolerate failures. So let's recall in operating systems, how does the disk system tolerate failures? Um, it's ECE344, operating systems. So anyone still remembers? Sorry? OK, uh, you didn't take that course. Uh, anyone knows? Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, that is something in the file system uh, for tolerance, right? But uh, the disk, yes, uh, it's the rate. Redundant array of independent disks. It just creates multiple copies of the same uh, data. And we use the similar idea here in our distributed systems. So redundancy in distributed systems is also like uh, multiple disks, but they are presented by multiple servers. So it's a collection of independent servers. So normally, a set of servers operate as a logically single server. That's the uh, main point. And then if some servers uh, go down, so the remaining ones can still perform the task. So that's the key idea of fault tolerance. So a question naturally pops up. How can we do that? How can we make a set of servers operate like a logically single server? And how can we manage the consistency among servers? And the commonly used system model is called state machine replication. Um, so state machine replication is, a, first of all, it's a replication service where a set of servers compute identical bytes, copies of the same uh, state. Um, and this service provides an abstraction of its replication with a client interface. So here, the client treats the state machine replication as a black box. The client doesn't care about what's going on inside the replication service. It only interacts with the client interface provided by the replication service. And then um, after the client sends the request, the client will just wait for the replies. So it creates an isolation between the client side and the server side. And the consensus algorithm's job is to manage the interior of the replication service. So consensus algorithms coordinate server actions to coherently update server states. And they need to guarantee two service properties, which are safety and liveness. So first, safety. Uh, it means all non-faulty servers agree on a total order of the execution of requests despite failures. And then liveness. So liveness means your, your algorithm needs to, it needs to terminate at some point. So clients eventually receive replies to their requests. Um, throughout the years, there are many consensus algorithms. And uh, you have learned Paxos and uh, it, so you have, but what you have learned is the basic Paxos. Uh, it's a very famous algorithm, but it's also a little bit difficult to understand, and it's difficult to implement in the real world. Uh, so today, we are going to focus on the raft consensus algorithm. 
So Raft was published by Diego Angaro from Stanford University, and it received the best paper award from um, the ATC conference, 2014. So Raft is a leader-based consensus algorithm. It's just like Paxos, you have a single proposer. And it is said to be more understandable than Paxos. So we will figure it out after this lecture to see if it's really like more understandable. And um, it tolerates benign failures, the same failure assumption as Paxos. And Raft has had a great impact on a wide range of applications. For example, file systems, we have polar file systems and databases. There are many databases use uh, Raft as their coordination algorithm to guarantee the consistency. And for cloud computing, we have Docker, Kubernetes, they all use Raft to manage the global state and also replication. So it is a very famous and practical algorithm. So before we dive into the details, um, let's look at some basic concept in Raft. So first, let's look at server states and terms. So here I've got five servers, and in a Raft system, um, there are two major operating stages, which are replication and leader election. So each server in Raft operates in, in one of the three states, which are leader, follower, and candidate. So the candidate state is uh, during the leader election. In replication, there's no candidate state. There are only leader and follower. So here, uh, we assume server one is the leader and others as followers. And there are also two types of consensus in Raft. The first one is consensus in replication. Under normal operation, we have a leader in our system and uh, other servers run as a follower. So the consensus, so Raft just manage the replication uh, between the server and followers, the leader and, uh, and followers, sorry. And another type of consensus is consensus in leader election. Since we only use one server as a leader, when the leader fails, we need to elect a new server as a new leader. And then the second concept is timers and heartbeats. So in Raft, we have leader and follower. And the each follower has a timer. So the timer keeps counting down until follower receives a message from the leader, which is the heartbeat. So here, the timer keeps counting down, and then once it receives the message, the heartbeat message from the leader, it resets its timer. So this is a very crucial idea uh, for the interaction between leader and followers. When the followers' timers expire, followers become a candidate and start a leader election campaign. We will talk about that later. So here, if the leader wants to maintain its authority, maintain its leadership, the leader needs to send periodic heartbeats to reset followers' timers. And the interval of the heartbeats should be significantly smaller than the timer timeout. For example, if the timer timeout is uh, one to two seconds, then probably the interval of heartbeats needs to be uh, 100 milliseconds. So they can have sufficiently long time to, uh, to travel for the heartbeat. And then let's look at terms. So uh, in Raft, time is divided into terms, and terms increase monotonically. Uh, terms are, lo are uh, local variables, so each server has a term, and they act as a logical clock. So you have learned that in, in the first lecture, uh, the logical clock. Um, and a server always sync up to a higher term. So no matter what, if, the, if a server receives a higher term, then it sets its term to the highest one. So let's look at um, an illustration of the physical time and our logical time. So here's the physical time, the x-axis. So in each term, the first period is the leader election. Uh, the first period is leader election. And then if a leader can be elected, then we have a replication period. And then when the leader fails, the system will go into another term, which is the increase term. And then maybe we have another leader election period, and then maybe this leader election 
uh, fails, and then we have another period, so it go, goes into term three um, until a leader is elected, and then normal operation resumes, we have replication period, uh, which is the uh, blue bar here. Okay, so that's all for the basic concepts. So let's look at the replication phase first in Raft. And replication in Raft has two phases, which are ordering phases and uh, committing phases. So the workflow is pretty simple. It's, and it's quite similar to uh, Paxos when you have only one proposer. So first, the client sends a request to the leader of, your, uh, of the Raft system. Uh, so here we assume server one is the leader in the Raft system. And then uh, the client sends uh, request A, uh, a value A. Uh, so here we have the uh, ordering log and commit log. So, this, so the leader will put the received value to its ordering log first. And then the leader assigns a sequence number to this client request. So here the value is A and uh, the sequence number is N. And then the leader broadcasts this message to all servers. So after receiving the message from the leader, the other servers will replicate uh, the value to its ordering log. And then after that, the other servers runs as a follower, they reply to the leader. And if the leader can receive a majority of replies, then the leader considers this value to be committed at sequence number n. So the leader then puts the, uh, the order and the value to its commit log. At this time, um, we have five servers. The leader considers the value to be committed. And it immediately replies to the client saying, hey, uh, the value proposed, uh, value A, is committed by our system uh, at sequence number n. But at this time, the other followers server two to server five, they haven't seen a decision made by the leader. So the leader will use the next heartbeat to transmit this information to other servers. And the leader will broadcast to an, another uh, message to other servers. So after receiving that, the other servers will synchronize to the leader and also commit the value A. So here's a summary of Raft replication. It uses a stronger leadership than Paxos. And the log entries flow only from the leader to followers. Followers are passive. Followers must synchronize its log according to the leader's log. They have no rights to negotiate with the leader. So the leader is a dictator in, in Raft. And it uses quorum replications just like Paxos. So in a system consisting of two F plus one servers, an action can be made uh, by F plus one servers, the majority. And a, slow, a minority of slow servers do not impact overall replication performance because we only need F plus one servers uh, in, our, in the decision making at the leader side. All right, so uh, any questions so far uh, of the Raft's replication method compared to Paxos? OK, um, it's quite simple, right? Um, okay, let's look at um, a more complicated scenarios. So right now, we're assuming there's no failure. The leader is always correct. And then we can simplify the workflow uh, by using uh, just w like one proposer in Paxos and to conduct this uh, two phase of uh, replication. But, under, uh, but the thing is, um, servers can fail. Failures always happen in our system. And the, the leader is the most crucial role in our system. So what if the leader fails and um, our system will lose like the coordinator in our system, so there's no server interacting with clients and no servers coordinating consensus with other servers? Uh, and also remember, Raft is, uh, has a stronger leadership than Paxos. So the followers synchronize to the leader. 
Uh, if there's no leader, the followers will just stop responding. So here we need to elect or select a new server from uh, a new leader from the remaining servers. And there are some requirements. So uh, the new leader should have the highest term value. Uh, so the term value represents the logical clocks in, in the raft system. Um, and the new leader should have the most up-to-date log. So the reason is we want to make sure the system never falls back to a previous state, uh, which means um, we don't want to lose any log entries because followers always synchronize to the leader. If the leader has less logs, if the leader uh, doesn't have the up-to-date log, then when followers synchronize to the leader, we lost, uh, in this case, uh, we lost log entries. So that, that is unacceptable. That violates the safety property. Okay. Uh, all right, so there is a pretty simple solution for uh, this selecting leader from the remaining servers. So anyone has some idea like how to, if it's up to you, how would you design a leader selection algorithm? Anyone wanna give it a try? No, sorry? Oh, I was just saying, you could use Haskell. Yeah, uh, that's true though. But uh, uh, let's say we have uh, only one leader and then we want to elect uh, a server, right? Uh, what's a simple solution? Yeah, uh, that could work. Uh, but that's uh, actually a little bit complicated. Uh, so is there any like simpler solution? Yep. Sorry? Uh, by the order of machine. Oh, by the order of machine numbers. Yeah, uh, that could work. Uh, it's actually uh, just a little bit more sophisticated than the uh, server numbers. So we have a predefined schedule, right? So the predefined schedule here is very simple. It's the term value mod the uh, server ID. So here, if it's in term one, we have five servers, right? And then one mod five, then it's, then it's one. So server one is the leader. And then if this term, term two, it goes to term two, then we use two mod five, and then that's server two. So it's pretty, f and it's also pretty fair. So every server gets a chance to be uh, the leader. So it it, the leadership rotates like a circle. And so the process, uh, is this idea is very simple, it's very easy to understand and easy to implement. And probably you won't write like, too many bugs implementing this uh, algorithm. Uh, but there are some problems. Uh, so what's the disadvantage of this scheme? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we cannot guarantee that the next server is available, right? Um, so here, uh, this scheme cannot skip crashed servers. So let's say, uh, so we have two F plus one servers and we tolerate F failures. So there is a possibility that F failures can fail. So here we have five servers, two servers can fail. Uh, if we just use this passive leadership rotation mechanism, then we don't know, like we have no prior knowledge of the next server. And also, uh, we cannot avoid slow servers. So we want this, the new leader to have the most up-to-date log. But in each replication, there is a possibility that F servers uh, do not participate in the replication scheme. So they, they are like slow servers. Uh, if we encounter a slow server, then uh, we, we cannot elect that slow server as a leader. So we need to keep uh, like skipping the, the, the servers and then until we find a qualified one. So can we do better? So um, uh, there, someone just said like we use uh, the first one detect the, the leader, uh, the leader failure, and then to become a leader. So that exactly, that's exactly the idea of raft leader election. And uh, so to do so, so each server joins the raft system as a follower. 
And then remember, it has a timer. So when the timer time out, the follower becomes a candidate. And then um, during the candidate state, the server will uh, broadcast request vote requests to other servers and solicit votes. So I will talk about this uh, de the detail later. So in this state, when the candidate discovers a current, uh, a current leader with or a higher term, uh, the candidate will go back to the follower state. That's for the liveness guarantee. So it, it doesn't stuck into the candidate state. And then if the candidate can collect a majority vote, then the candidate will become the leader. And if a leader discovers servers with a higher term, it also goes back to follower. So this path guarantees that if we have a leader, and then this, this leader just uh, in a very slow network, and then it cannot communicate with any other servers, uh, and then other servers probably have already elected a new leader. So after this network recovers, so, so the old leader uh, can synchronize to other servers, can go back to follower to guarantee the, uh, the liveness. And there are some uh, requirements. The first, uh, only one leader should be elected in each term. We cannot have multiple leaders. And then uh, crash servers uh, should not be assigned with leader duty. And slow servers uh, should not be uh, elected. Um, so let's look at the details of the Rust solution. So again, there's no leader schedule. Whoever triggers a timeout campaigns for leadership. And uh, so for example here, let's assume uh, server one, which is the leader, uh, right now is crashed. And then server five triggers a timeout. Then server five will first increase its term value and then it transitions to the candidate state, and it sends out a message to uh, request votes from other servers. So there are three key parameters here. It's term value, it's current term value, which is term two, and it's lock, uh, lost, uh, last log index. So the log index is uh, what we talk about in the replication on the log. So right now the log index is one. And last log term is um, the term value when the last log is committed. Um, so, it's, uh, so we won't consider the last log term value here. It's a little bit complicated, so we want to simplify the workflow. Uh, so we only consider the term value and last log index value. And let's assume every server is on the same page. They all have replicated the value A in the replication. So the log index are the same, uh, it's one. And then the uh, server five will vote for itself. And then server five uh, broadcasts the message. So other servers, when they receive the request from a candidate, um, there are some criteria to grant a vote. So first, the candidate's term should, uh, should be not less than the receiver's term, which is the voter's term. So right now, server five, the candidate's term is term two, and the other servers, as a voter, their term are term one. So the first criterion, uh, Holds, so uh, the other servers uh, will vote for for the first criterion. They will vote for server five, and then the the receiver should uh, have not voted in this term. So they can only vote once. A server can only vote once in a term, and then the candidate's lock should be uh, at least up to date as the receiver's lock. So it, so in this example, all the criteria are met. So other servers will synchronize to the higher term, which is term two, and then reply to server five, which is the leader. So here, server five receives four votes. Uh, three votes from server two, three, four, and one vote from itself. So server five uh, has collected a majority vote, and it will become the new leader in our in the rough system in term two. But there's some problem in this uh, scenario. So does anyone see any problem here or potential problem of the voting based leader election? Anyone? Yep. 
deadlock. Yeah, uh, So two potential leaders. Yeah, both of them get half the vote, like they divide the vote. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is called the split votes uh, in leader election in Raft. So here's an example. Um, so let's say server three and server five both trigger timeouts and transition to the candidate state. And they all broadcast the uh, message, but let's look at this again. So Keep an eye on the message sent by server five uh, to server two. So it's very slow. And the message sent uh, by server three is a lot faster than, than server five. So server two, let's look at this again. So server two will receive the message from server three first and then receive uh, the message from server five. So server two here will vote for server three and it will not vote for server five because every server vote only once in a turn. So in this case, server two will reply to server three and server four will reply to server five. And server three will receive two votes, one vote from server uh, two and one vote from itself. So there's no majority vote. Um, the same situation on server five's end. There's also no majority vote. It only uh, collects two votes. So the raft solution here is to use randomized timers. Um, so the reason we have this split vote is we have two servers trigger a timeout at the same time, and then they collect insufficient votes at the same time. So if we can use randomized timers, we can mitigate this problem. So servers won't uh, time out at the same time. Uh, maybe in this case, when server, uh, if server three has a higher uh, timeout value, and then uh, maybe before server three times out, server five is already elected as a new leader. Um, but if this situation does happen, then Raft's solution is just to wait longer. So each server will, res each candidate will reset its timer when it transitions from the worker, so, sorry, uh, follower to candidate. And it will limit the time of collecting votes. So if the candidate cannot collect a majority vote in time, and then the candidate will time out again to increase its, time, uh, its term again, and then uh, send out the request vote messages again. So in the future, there's going to be a time where uh, there's no competing candidates. Uh, there's only one candidate can collect sufficient votes. So, okay, here is the summary uh, of the Raft uh, consensus algorithm. So Raft operates in a succession of terms with two major uh, phases. The first one is leader election. It's the consensus to agree on a leader. And the second one is replication. Once we have a leader, then uh, the, cons uh, we have, we, the consensus algorithm uh, is to be used to uh, coordinate the transaction replication between the server and uh, the followers. And then Raft is fast and efficient. It can tolerate up to F plus one benign failures among a total of two F plus one servers. So under normal operation, it can achieve consensus by collecting replies from a majority of servers. And so the leader election mechanism allows servers to proactively campaign for leadership. And it can avoid unqualified servers to be elected as a leader. So it's pretty efficient. Okay, here are some um, suggested readings. So this lecture uh, does not cover all the details of Raft. Uh, you can check out the uh, full paper of Raft. And there's also a, a visualization tool provided by the Raft web page. Um, it's pretty cool, like you, it's interactive. You can uh, time out a server and then you can request a, a, a command to see what's hap uh, what will happen. And then there's also some papers analyze and optimize Raft. And also there's a paper uh, trying to solve 
the split vote problems by priori prioritizing servers. Okay. Okay, here is the uh, today's lecture. So any questions about Raft and also compared to Paxos? Yep. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Good question. I'm glad you come here. Uh, so when the leader goes down, yeah. and then uh, do clients still connect to the, the server and get data, or is that the phone is still a new leader? Well? Yeah. So there is no uh, service can be provided uh, in between a leadership change. So if a leader goes down, then the system temporarily halts. Uh, there's no way to provide service. So that's why like the leader is the most crucial rule in the Raft system. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, so first, there is a liveness problem in Paxos. Um, and also, in, in the real world, when we want to use consensus algorithm, it's very easy to implement a leader-based, a single leader-based scheme. And then uh, we are talking about fault tolerance a lot. And also in milestone three, you are going to like crash some servers and to see what's happened. But uh, failures don't happen that often um, in, uh, in our systems. So to, under normal operation, we need a fast replication scheme. So Raft achieves uh, this goal better than Paxos. That's my personal opinion. Sorry, could you say that again? Uh, oh, um, okay. So the question was, uh, is it fair uh, to use random light timers? Because uh, slow servers may have like a smaller timeout, so they can time out faster, so they can be elected. Um, but it's uh, that that won't happen because in, there's uh, some criteria uh, for the voting scheme. Um, so here, candidate's log should be at least up to date as receiver's log. If there's a slow server wants to be a leader, then the slow server, when it becomes a candidate, uh, its log index is much smaller than the uh, other, uh, other servers. So other servers won't vote for this slow server. Sorry? <clears throat> With the least latency. Yeah. Like it doesn't compensate for like the latency from the server from the leader to like the other servers. You might choose like a server with the uh, largest latency, like the other servers. Oh, okay. Um, so, so if I understand that correctly, uh, you were saying um, so it will choose like whoever times out the, the, the fast. Right, so faster than other servers, the other candidates, if we choose that one. Yes, so uh, that, is, that is the basic concept here. So if we have multiple servers, time on, and then um, we, uh, if, if a candidate can, collect, can uh, be succeeded, can be elected, uh, can collect vote faster than its counterparts and its components, opponents, and then this candidate can be elected as uh, the new leader. Yes. So this kind of like a, each server is equal. And so whoever can do the job faster than others, and then it will be the leader. OK, uh, any other questions? Here. <clears throat> yeah, oh. I will post it. Okay, so let me. Uh, Server that has the highest log value, and then all the 
other servers have one step lower of the log value. Could be other groups of servers that don't have the highest log value grouped together and then create new leader from them that's not like the most up-to-date one and then we lose data from that one server that's ahead. Yeah. Um, so that's, that was a great question. Um, so the question was, uh, can slow servers uh, be together and then elect a uh, slow server among a slow group right, to be the leader? Uh, so that is something we are trying, uh, we're trying to avoid. Uh, and it won't happen because so in each replication, here, the leader needs to collect a majority of replies. So that means majority 2 f plus 1 and majority is f plus 1. So we have five servers, three um, is, is a majority, right? So we only have two slow servers now. And then when two slow servers, we then want, uh, they want to elect, elect each other, there's no sufficient votes. So they, they are a minority. So they have to, like, in, also in the election, a candidate needs to collect a majority vote from other servers to be elected. So there's going to be one, uh, at least one fast server won't vote for this slow server. So the slow server cannot be elected. Yeah, that was a great question. OK, so let me ask a question like, do you think, uh, raise your hand if you think like, uh, Raft is easier to understand than Paxos? OK, great. So that's indeed like a more understandable approach. OK. Um, OK, any other questions? No? Oh, we, we do consider latency between servers, but it doesn't matter. Like if the if the timer don't trigger a timeout, then there's no problem here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like if there's one server that has like a thousand milliseconds latency, like all other servers, and like all other servers have like one millisecond latency to another server, and each server has like one millisecond of timeout, and the server has like a thousand milliseconds timeout. Uh, it's more likely um, a server with a, a smaller timeout value will be elected as a, as a new leader. So it will time out faster. Yeah, so, uh, well, if the, well, let's say like if, a, if a server uh, has a very low like, timeout value, but the network latency is super high, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah, so uh, it's kind of like the total, like the round trip, right? So RDT is the time of value plus the network latency. So that's the total travel time of the uh, request message. Uh, so it doesn't like, minimize the latency? Um, the latency can be like uh, anything. It's, it doesn't matter like if we have a higher latency or, slow, or lower latency. If the, if this, the, the latency of uh, if a candidate is super high, then it's more likely this server won't be elected. Some other servers will be elected. Yeah, but if the timeout is small, then the base timeout will be elected. Yeah, it, it can be, yes. Yeah. Uh, if, the, or if, the, if the leader fails, uh, so in between the leader telling the client that it's committed to these things, and then it actually broadcasting the commit to the other servers, so if the leader fails there, uh, and then we hold a leadership election. What state will the new leader be in? Will it uh, have, like, it won't know that the thing was committed because. Yeah, that, that was a great question. Uh, so that's actually a, uh, something like hidden in Raft when people say, like, Raft is more understandable. Uh, so th they haven't found, like, this problem. So this is. Uh, the part where Raft is get, uh, gets like super complicated. Um, so here, we have a, um, so if, a, so let, let's uh, clear all the logic here. So if a server, if a leader can commit a value, that means a majority of 
servers in the system has ordered the value, right? So the, so the other servers have already seen the value in, the, in its order log. And then if the leader replies uh, to the client saying, hey, this value is committed, but right after that, the leader fails. And then the other servers won't have the, uh, this value on their commit log. So in this case, the, highest, uh, the, the, the server with the highest log index will be elected. And then it will reissue this request to all other servers to form this consensus. So that's kind of like a compensation uh, behavior here. Yeah, this is uh, pretty messy. And you can try that uh, through the uh, Raft visualization tool. Uh, I really recommend you to try that tool as, because it's very interactive and very intuitive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The visualization is broken? Uh, you can right click and then there's an option to time out. So here's the visualization tool. And um, so here, like the, uh, the circle here running is the timer. So this is a leader election. And then right now, server four uh, is in term two. It's elected as the new leader. And then we can say uh, request, so send a request. And then you can see this is a log. And then after it's become a solid uh, boxer, and then that's commit. So it's a super cool like visualization tool I've ever seen. It's, it's, the, it's the coolest one. Um, and then let's say we want to stop, crash the leader. You see, the other servers won't uh, reset their timer. So here, server two will increase its term to term three, and then it collects a majority vote and it's selected as a new leader here. And then we can also recover this. Let's restart. Let's see, let's see it's a, so previously it's a leader, right? When it, when it crashed. And then right now, when it recovers, it's in a lower term, so when it receives a higher term message, so it will back to, go back to follower. Yeah, so, and, then we can also, and then we can also stop it. Uh, how to stop it? Uh, oh, here. Uh, we can just stop the process, and then we can say we want to request a value in term three and request two values here. And then this server can also request a value, but it doesn't work because this is not a leader, right? Uh, and then we resume it, and we can see. See the first, uh, the other servers will synchronize to the leader's log for the, for this value. And then commit this value. And then commit this value, and then uh, replicate the next value on the leader's log. Then after a long period, uh, they will all sync up to the leader. Okay, so yeah, so if you're interested, just try this one. This is, yep. Timeout? Okay. Um, Timeout. Yeah, it's working. Sorry? Uh, so you mean a timeout? Uh, so the timeout just means this is a follower, right? So we don't want to wait, I just want to timeout. That when I will increase the term, and then I will become a candidate, and then I want to become the next leader. Oh, I thought you meant like, kind of like, okay. <laughs> for Ralston, four. four? Uh, I think it's like a non trivial extension, right? Yeah. So what's considered like non trivial? Like, is there like a good like, example of what, what you were looking for? Uh, the, the design is really up to you. Uh, so non trivial just means. Uh, oh, it's pretty hard to explain. Like, you cannot just build a web page, for example. You cannot build a web page and saying, uh, showing all the transmission or the, just like this one. Uh, you cannot just build a web page for that. That's that's considered to be trivial. Uh, and also, uh, for example, you can implement a consensus algorithm there, uh, and also you can use Zookeeper. Uh, so Zookeeper was not used uh, in uh, Melson two. 
Yeah, you can use Zookeeper for uh, Milestone 4. And then the reason you use Zookeeper should be uh, you have multiple ECS servers. And then if one ECS server fails, and you, you use Zookeeper to elect another uh, ECS server. Yes, that's sufficient. And you need to guarantee, if you implement your own consensus algorithm, you need to guarantee it is correct. Yeah. Could something else we do kind of be like on the performance side? Like, I don't know, we double the performance of this like the milestone So you're saying like fix your own box and then to make it perform better? <laughs> uh, no. I'm trying to slide that past you. No. Yeah. Uh, so what you can do is you can use multiple servers and to do a real evaluation for distributed servers. Uh, so right now, uh, in, in our demos, we're, all servers are on the same server, right? physical server. Uh, and then it's really like, it's just for the demo. It's, it's not going to happen in the real world. So if you have multiple servers, you can uh, do an evaluation uh, on like, different physical servers and then you have clients on different physical servers. Yeah. But I don't think like we have that many physical servers. And do a large evaluation, uh, like a handler nodes, something like that. Yeah. That could also be cool. And define some message uh, formats, some specific message and actions. Okay, any other questions? No? All right, uh, thank you all. I think that's the call of the day.